Hi, welcome. This is Clement the Elector. You know, I love rotary encoders. Ever since I discovered these endless uh, potentiometers, I'm a big fan of them. In this video, I will show you how you can connect one or two of them to a single GPIO pin of a microcontroller. The most common type is the incremental rotary encoder. Its output signal depends on its previous state or position. Absolute encoders exist too, and they provide an absolute angle. Rotary encoders are often used as endless dials in all sorts of equipment, but in robotics for instance, uh, they are also used for determining the position of an arm, the speed of a wheel, or the direction of rotation of a motor. The incremental rotary encoder is a very simple device. It produces pulses as it turns, and when it spins faster, the pulse rate will be higher. To measure rotational speed, it is enough to measure the frequency of the pulse signal. But when the direction of rotation is also of interest, two signals are required. The most common solution is to use two signals A and B that are phase shifted by 90 degrees, like a sine and a cosine wave, but square. By applying some clever mathematics, the rotational direction can be determined from these two signals. To connect the rotary encoder to a microcontroller, two pins are needed, one for the A signal and one for the B signal. Two inputs is not much, and most of the time this is not a problem. However, as an example, I have an oscilloscope that has seven rotary encoders. This requires 14 MCU pins, which is quite a lot. Not only that, these pins must also be monitored by the MCU somehow. Some time ago I looked for a way to reduce the number of input pins required to connect a rotary encoder to a microcontroller. I found a solution in the R2R digital to analog converter. Such a resistor network can have any number of inputs as long as the resistors are precise enough. So if you connect the A and B signals from a rotary encoder to a 2-bit R2R network, the output will be a signal that can take on four values from 0 to 3. Now the rotary encoder only consumes a single MCU pin. An 8-bit R2R digital to analog converter can combine up to four rotary encoders into one analog signal that can take on uh, 256 values from 0 to 255. A microcontroller with a 10-bit AD converter, which is pretty standard uh, these days, can decode the signal. Now this may be pushing it a little, as noise and the precision of the resistors make life a bit harder, but for two rotary encoders with built-in push buttons, such a scheme is uh, totally feasible. In this case, you only need a 6-bit DA converter, which would give a 10-bit AD converter a 4-bit margin per value to decode the signal without errors. So to check the idea, I set up a simulation in LTSpice. This is a 2D R2R uh, digital to analog converter, where R is 100K and 2 r 200K. These values are high, uh, they have to be much higher than the pull-up resistors so that uh, the pull-up resistors do not influence the ratio of the R2R uh, converter too much. And at the same time we don't want these pull-ups too small, otherwise there would be uh, flowing too much current through them. Ok, so the encoder switch signals are simulated by uh, voltage controlled switches, signals A and B, and the voltage controlled switch is controlled by a pulse generator. Uh, for these voltage controlled switches to work, you have to give them a model, you have to specify a model. We specify the standard model uh, built in in LTSpice, which is just a SW. Uh, and this switch uh, switches when the voltage on its control inputs uh, changes polarity. So this is why V1 and V2 produce signals between minus 1 and plus 1 volts. Ok, V2 is, uh, has a 90 degrees phase lag uh, compared to V1. So here we have the rotary encoder signals A and B. Ok, we run the simulation and we pick the output signal and we see that we have indeed 1, 2, 3, 4 levels. Let's add to these the signals A and B. Ok, now this is a bit cluttered so we will move the signals a little bit out of our way like you do on an oscilloscope. So let's scale this by 2 and move it up to uh, let's say 4 volts. And we do the same for the B signal, divide by 2 and we move it up above the A signal, so that would be 7 volts. There we go, now we have a good view of the signals. And now even better. When we consider the A and B signals as binary as a binary counter, we have here the value 0, then here we have 1, then we get 3, because they are both 1, then we get 2, and then 0 again. So we have 0, 1, 3, 2, 0. Step size seems to be the same for uh, all the bits. Okay, so let's uh, now compare this to a rotary encoder that spins in the other direction. 
uh, to do this uh, quickly, I will save this one as, uh, let's say, uh, it's spinning right. And let's save it again. There's left. So we have left over, we open the right. And now, as we said, the right was what we just had in left. To make it spin in the other way, in the other direction, we simply swap the pulse generators. So, there we go. And we run the simulation of left. Output signal, and we run the simulation of right. Right here, output signal. And when we compare the output signals, then we see that they are mirror images of each other. Now that the simulation has confirmed the operating principle, we can build a, a prototype with a real uh, rotary encoder. So, I finished my uh, prototype, now it's time to write the Arduino sketch for it and see if it works. This is the Arduino sketch I wrote for uh, this project. So this uh, decodes the analog signal into two rotary encoder digital streams that uh, can then be used somewhere in a program. It starts with a table that uh, contains the boundaries defined by the R to R digital to analog converter. Then we have um, rotary encoder structure that we need for our two rotary encoders. It keeps track of uh, states. A splash uh, function, a sample function, a push button read function. Then here we have the encoder read function. To find the direction of rotation, you take the XOR of the previous state with the current state. If it's going to the left, the increment will be negative. If it's going to the right, the increment will be positive. Uh, then the substates, well, the rotary encoder has to go through four substates before uh, a tick is uh, recognized. And the counter can be incremented or decremented. So when we have four substates in the right order, then we can validate a, a tick. Then we have the function setup, it begins by opening the serial port, show the splash uh, screen, initialize the rotary encoder data structures. And here we have the loop function loop that is called continuously, so that starts by sampling the analog input, A0, which is the output of the R2R uh, DAC. Then we map the input voltage to the boundaries as defined by the R2R digital to analog converter. We map it to the closest boundary, so that can be lower or the higher one. Uh, if we have a boundary, then we decode the value with the encoder read function, and we update the counter. If one of the two counters has been modified, we compare it to the previous value, then we display the new value. So we flash this into the Arduino. There we go, so I rotate now S1, and as you can see it works fine. Now I rotate S2, which works fine as well. We see that S2 has an influence on S1. This is probably due to noise and also um, contact bounds, of course. In the sketch, no measures are taken against contact bounds. In order to fix the interference problems between the two rotary encoders, I added some capacitors on it to get rid of the contact uh, bouncing. And let's see how that works. That's rotary encoder S1. S2 is working. The interference is almost gone now. Spin them at the same time, opposite directions. So that's cool. So that's it. In this video I showed you how to connect the two rotary encoders to a microcontroller using only one GPIO pin. I also showed you how you can simulate it in LT Spice. I hope you found it interesting and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.